Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man Legends. Alright, so now that we've gotten our jump spring power, which is awesome, we can actually go back into the subgate and kind of get something, uh, something else here. As you may remember, whenever we come down from the entrance, there's this area over to the left. I kind of briefly turned the camera this way before. Uh, we couldn't reach it because it was too high, but now that we have the jump springs, we can get up there easily. We don't even have to grab the ledge. And we can go through the door here and kind of go into a different little area. And we're going to be getting something that's going to make a pretty awesome item for us later, so uh, it's definitely worth picking up. And it's also worth, like I said, shooting these guys. We've encountered them before. They don't really do too much, but they usually drop a decent amount of money, so it's worth doing. Uh, we can come into this little area here, and uh, this treasure chest has something really cool, a roller board. Can't use it by itself, but it's another one of those things that Roll can use for item development. And uh, that's going to be pretty awesome later. Whoa, holy crap. <laughs> it actually jumped on me. Alright, I think there's a few more of these around here. Maybe just one more. Okay, that works. There's a couple holes over here that you definitely want to check. Uh, this one I think doesn't have too much. Yeah, 820. But this one over here, uh, on the other side, this is like the jackpot of all holes in the wall. Riker Sharv with 9,240 zenny. That's incredible. That is a lot of money. And we're up to, like, 35,000 now, which is absolutely awesome. We can buy quite a few upgrades at this point, and I'm looking forward to doing so. Alright, so we need to be going on through here. And, uh... Let's see. I, I don't think... This doesn't take too long. I believe this is actually an area we've been to before. As you can see, the entire place is pretty much filled out already. So, uh, this is definitely one we've been to before. But I believe there's a chest over here with some money. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, this is just another uh, little platform. Uh, I think this is the ruins we were just in, actually. Like, those boxes over there you can just barely see are the ones that lead back to uh, outside of the market. But, yeah, we're done in here for now. We basically just came in here to get the roller board, which is going to be used to make a cool little item for us later, like I've said. So let's just go ahead and head back on out. There's a couple other things we can get now that we have the jump springs as well. One of which I'm going to get, and one of which I'll just kind of show you where it is because it's not really that useful for me. Uh, but let's go ahead and return to the surface for now. And once we get up here, we're going to be using the support car to take us to the city hall area. So we can get back up to that those uh, planes to the north. So let's get back in real quick. Alright, so I went ahead and just took us back to city hall. There's the car. Um, so we're going to be going through the north door up here once again. And now that we have the jump springs, remember there was kind of like a big raised area in the center where all those things were raining explosives on us? Well, now we're actually going to be able to get up there. And there's one thing we can get there that's pretty cool. What do you think? Uh, yes? <laughs> sure. That's what I thought. What were they thinking? Digging a big hole like that around the ruins. I wonder if anyone will ever be able to enter there again. Uh, well, I got there. I guess I am a little bit different from the average person, so. Alright, and where we're going to be going is uh, actually around that building there. First off, we can actually go in it, and uh, as we do so, we can see that the junk shop people are actually here for some weird reason. I don't know why. They're still in the junk shop, too, if you go there. Uh, but we can buy all their stuff here, and they should have... Oh, yeah, they've got some good, good upgrades. Look at this. Attack plus four. Buying that for sure. And, uh, let's see, what else do they have that's somewhat decent? I could just get an attack plus three, and I could literally max out my attack at this point. But it's kind of good to have a few other things, uh, like range is good. Uh, in fact, let's see, it's energy and range. Eh, you know what, let's just go with the range booster as well. Like I said, I could max out my attack, and that's normally something I'd like to do, actually, but uh, it's good to have range for a few things that are coming up in a little bit, so we might as well just hold off. There's also a few other things we can buy here. Now we can buy a hyper cartridge, which recharges our special weapons, or a chameleon net, which camouflages the user for a limited time. I have never used one of those before, so I'm not really planning on doing it now. Uh, while we have the money, let's go ahead and buy a few more uh, life gauge segments. As you can see, they start getting really expensive until eventually it looks like we've bought them all, so I guess our health is maxed out already. I might as well also buy a few more extra packs. Those will come in handy. And that's pretty much it. And we're out of money, so, all right. Now, before I forget, let's go ahead and put these buster parts on. Uh, the laser, boom, look at that attack. And the range booster Omega. 
Eh, yeah, there we go. That's not bad. Okay, and we can go behind uh, the junk shop area here. Oh, well, it's actually not directly behind. It's kind of to the left there. <laughs> Gosh, Mega Man, that's insane. All right, so it's a box, and we found a safety helmet. And the safety helmet is going to be used to make something that's equally cool. But, yeah, so you can also go back. Uh, remember, we can go through this little passageway that's around that corner, and then go into the little building on the next screen. If we want, we could go all the way back into that area, and there's a ledge we could jump to with the jump springs that holds the uh, Buster Park called the Triple Access. It raises three of the Buster stats by one. Uh, so if you want to get that now, you could, but really, I mean, you can pretty much just buy better stuff. And that's what our Buster looks like now with the uh, upgrades, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to get there. And uh, we're going to go back and uh, have Roll develop some more stuff for us. Again, I could use the walkie-talkie, but uh, it takes about the same amount of time to just walk. Alright, so let's talk to Roll. Item development. Nope. No, look. Alright, and now she is going to make for us the helmet out of the safety helmet. Go figure, right? Look, I resized this helmet to fit you perfectly. If you wear this, you won't get knocked down by enemy attacks as easily as before, and you'll be able to survive long falls, even if someone throws you off a cliff. Of course, you're not invulnerable, so you should still be careful, but I bet it'll come in handy if you get into a fight in a high place. Indeed. So now that she's made us the uh, helmet, we can go and check it out into our special items, put on the helmet, and we are now looking a lot like Mega Man. Look at that. Awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and just hop back in the car real quick. We can now actually access another part of town since we've kind of finished up this little part of the story, I suppose. So let's go back to downtown real quick. And once we get into this new part of town, there's actually going to be a lot of little, like, mini-games and side quests we can do. Uh, most of the side quests in the game actually are going to take place in this town. Alright, so that's to the north. We need to be heading to the west. And this gate has been there all along, but if we checked it out before, I would pretty much just say that it's locked and we can't get in there yet. But now we can actually go in here, and this is the uptown area. Which is pretty cool. It's got it's pretty colorful, it's pretty bright, it's got some interesting things. There's a hospital over there, and there's the TV station. And the TV station is actually going to give us a lot of different items we can use, so uh, that's good. In fact, I'm actually going to head in there right now. There's a few different mini-games that we can play in here. There's only two we can do at the moment, uh, but there's going to be another one that we can uh, do a little bit later. So we talked to the chick at the desk here. We've been waiting for you. You're one of the contestants for our hit show, Dangerous Games, aren't you? Let's see, which event are you signed up for? And we can pick one of these two games to pick from. First thing we're going to do is Beast Hunter, which sounds awesome. So uh, let's go to studio number one and have fun. But yeah, Beast Hunter is not quite what you would think it is, <laughs> as you can probably see right now. Our next challenger is Mega Man Volnut. Do you want to hear the rules? Yeah, sure, why not? In this game, you have to kick a ball at the dog, chasing the man there, and see how many times you can hit it. If your number of hits is better than the par, you win. You start at rank D, and as you win, your rank will go up, but so will the par. If you win at rank A, you'll get a prize. Good luck. So there's our instructions. It's pretty much self-explanatory, kicking and kicking. But uh, this game can be beaten pretty easily by uh, just kind of standing in one place and kicking the ball whenever you're about to hit the dog. So they move really slowly. No matter what rank you on, they never speed up. And eventually, after a few uh, rotations here, it's going to be a glowing one that comes along there. And if you can hit that, you get I think you get two for hitting it. So as you can see, we've already hit par. We have 30 seconds. So uh, we're in no danger of failing here whatsoever. And the game literally doesn't change. The only thing that changes as you rank up is the number of hits that you need to get. 18 would beat rank A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play through. We're going to get some money each time we beat it. And uh, I'm going to uh, pretty much just beat rank A and then we'll see the reward that we get. So I'll see you guys then. Alright, so we have just beat rank A. We got 18 hits and the par was only 16. And for beating rank A, we get the Zet Saber, which is going to be used to make a special weapon later. So no, I don't want to do that again. That game's kind of boring, but uh, we're not going to have to play it anymore, so. Okay, and now we're going to be playing the second game, which is actually considerably more difficult. Uh, actually, before I do so, uh, I'm not a contestant. <laughs> Uh, let's see, the buster parts, we're actually going to be using our buster for this. And, uh, 
Yeah, it's, it's a good idea usually to buff yourself up with some energy, probably some uh, more rapid fire as well. Uh, but I'm kind of limited with the, uh, the parts that I have right now. I'm actually probably going to go back and buy something to boost energy up. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I think I am going to do that. So I'm going to walk out the door here and I'll go do that. I'll meet you guys back here. All right, so we're back in the studio. They actually don't sell <laughs> anything that increases your rapid by more than one point. Uh, so I'm pretty much just forced to go with energy and range at this point, uh, which is actually going to make uh, this game a little bit more difficult, but we'll see once we get into it. So the next up is Balloon Fantasy, which sounds really weird, <laughs> and it kind of is. Uh, so basically, we've got all these little balloons that are bouncing around here. Let's go ahead and hear the rules. We release a lot of balloons into this room, and your job is to see how fast you can shoot and pop the red ones. Be careful if you don't pop the blue ones. If you do, your time goes down. You win if you can pop all the red ones within the time limit. There are four different ranks, and as you win, your rank will go up, but the higher your rank, the shorter the time limit. If you win at the highest rank, you'll win a prize. Good luck. Want to hear the rules again? No. Alright, so we've got 22 minutes to destroy all these red uh, balloons going around here. And uh, they all die in one hit regardless of what your attack is. Like, mine's at minimum right now. So these things are going to be bouncing around and we're going to have to try to shoot them all before we run out of time. Uh, if we hit the blue ones, our time actually uh, increases by one second. So that gives us one second less. Of course, rank D is, like, incredibly easy. I mean, it's really hard to lose. Uh, but as we keep going up, it's going to keep getting a lot harder. Uh, so as for usual, I'm just going to make it up to rank A. I'll probably show you uh, me actually beating it, because that can get really tricky. I don't know if I'm going to have commentary over the actual playing part of it or not, because I'm going to have to retry it a few times. But <laughs> anyway, I'll see you there. Holy crap, look at that, 1193. I had seven hundredths of a second left. Phew, man. All right, that game is difficult. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. All right, so we get the Mystic Orb for that, which is, of course, another uh, item we're going to be using to make something else. So, All right, we're done with the TV building for now. We're going to be coming back in a little bit, like I said, once we get another upgrade, but for now we're done. Uh, there's just really a couple more things that we need to do around this uh, uptown area before we can actually move on with the game. Uh, first things first, I want to come over here. There are some garbage cans. Uh, we can check in this one here for 800 zenny, and we can check this one here for another item, which is the broken propeller. Alright, and now there's also uh, one more thing we can do uh, before we move on. There's a check up here that's kind of a little painting a picture here. So we can talk to her. Hmm. Something's missing. What do you think I should add? <laughs> Some talent. Ouch. <laughs> really? You think so? I'm fresh out of red, which is why I haven't been using it, but... I suppose it is a little drag. But there's nothing wrong with this cold one either. Yep, so that kind of starts up another little side quest for us. Don't worry, it's really quick. It really is. It's probably one of the easiest ones. Um, but for now, we're kind of running a little bit low on time, so that's not what I wanted. Uh, we're going to go into the special items here and use the walkie-talkie. And now that we've we've actually picked up three items throughout the course of the game so far that we're going to be able to put together now to make another weapon. So let's do it. So using the broken motor, propeller, and cleaner, they can she can make the vacuum arm special weapon. This arm's a little different. You can't use it to attack with, but you can use it to easily gather up scattered refractor shards. Yeah, so that's another pretty cool one, uh, the vacuum arm. That's one. That's the one I was talking about where you can grind for money in the first sub ruins. You can basically just destroy the hive, then use the vacuum arm to suck in all the zenny, and uh, just repeat that process. So. All right, so we're about to run out of time. I'm going to talk to Data real quick here. Uh, charge us up. I think we're already charged, but whatever. And then we can save our game. So in the next part, we are going to finish up that little side quest with the uh, painter chick. And then we're going to move on to the next part of the game. So until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.